This review does not reflect the beliefs, disbeliefs or political ideology of the reviewer. It is simply an objective view of the film and not a reflection of his prejudice for or against any political party. At the turn of the 20th century, films were considered a modern marvel that emerged from the creation of literate and politically active societies informed by a mass media. Many governments were quick to realize the potential that films had in swaying public opinion in favor of its policies. Soon, politics and films began to intertwine. In 1912, the first propaganda film, Independenta Romani, was released. The movie was used for propagandistic purpose to shift the perception of the Romanian public towards accepting Romanian involvement into an expected Balkan conflict. World War I, the Great Depression, World War II, these were significant time periods that produced their own set of propaganda films. The 1930s and 1940s were known as the Golden Age of Propaganda. It was a time when the entire world was embroiled in an endless conflict. Joseph Goebbels, the second most powerful man in Nazi Germany, was appointed as Minister of Broadcast and Propaganda, during which time he made several films that were tailor-made to draw sympathy for the Nazi campaign. On the American side, films such as Charlie Chaplin's The Great Dictator, Casablanca, and 30 Seconds Over Tokyo were so loved by the public that they were never really considered as tools for propaganda. I'm Devesh and today on my channel, Sele Cinema, I'm going to review the Yanupam Kher Akshay Khanna Staro the Accidental Prime Minister. Based on the memoir by Indian policy analyst Sanjay Baru, the Accidental Prime Minister explores Dr. Manmohan Singh's tenure as the Prime Minister and the kind of control he had over the cabinet and the country. Propaganda films are rarely subtle. Sadly, the Accidental Prime Minister does not buck this trend. The film at best indulges in some reductionist characterization that seeks to absolutely vilify the political saga of the Gandhi family. What could instead have been a first-of-its-kind, House of Cards-style complex character study of a former Prime Minister, one that showcases the good, the bad and the ugly side of Indian politics, director Vijay Ratnakar's film looks more like a disappointingly mawkish attempt to cash in on the nationalist wave of the current times. What's more, rather than tumbling any real skeletons out of the closet, the film capitalizes on our already existing perceptions of its real-life characters. Take for instance Rahul Gandhi the butt of so many WhatsApp jokes and the favourite punching bag of certain news anchors. Quite expectedly, the movie makes his character look somewhat like this. Then there's Sonia Gandhi's character, who is so obviously painted as a villainous vampire, choosing to direct all the credit for the good work done by Manmohan Singh to her son. There are moments where she makes a kind of hand gesture, the sort of which you'd usually see scheming gangsters or drug kingpins sitting behind a table make. Then there's a scene where the camera pans on a painting of Indira Gandhi sitting regally on a throne-like chair, striking an imposing pose, the sort of which you'd usually associate with bloodthirsty tyrants. I actually choked on my popcorn the moment Rahul Gandhi started blabbering in Italian to his mother. The film is peppered with many such unintentionally comical moments that are deliberately engineered to tap into the forever naive public's perception of these personas so as to paint them as out-and-out -out cartoonish villains. And don't even get me started on Anupam K's exaggerated take on the central subject, but more on that in a moment. Amongst the supporting cast, every actor looks exactly like their real-life counterparts, but that's just about it. Performance-wise, it is only Akshay Khanna who effortlessly shines here as the political outsider come observer. Smoking cigars, his camaraderie with Manmohan Singh, or cunningly swimming his way through the sea of bureaucracy, Akshay Khanna plays Sanjay Baru with Panash. Some of his best moments are when he provides fresh insights into the internal machinery of the PMO by constantly breaking the fourth wall and letting the audience in on his plans. Oh, but wait, isn't that the exact same thing that we've seen Kevin Spacey doing in House of Cards? Zero points for originality. Anupam K looks like Manmohan Singh and speaks exactly like Manmohan Singh. But Anupam K does not play Manmohan Singh. He plays the public's perception of Manmohan Singh and therefore the Manmohan Singh that you see throughout the duration of the film is a well-meaning, honest, but otherwise spineless, naive and soft-spoken fellow and in an effort to garner sympathy for his character, Anupam Kher gives him a grumpy, puppy-eyed expression as if to make us all go Aww. Having acted in over 500 films and even running his own acting school, Anupam Kher seems to have forgotten the first and foremost rule of acting. In a bid to look and sound the part, the actor maintains a stiff body language throughout the film. Even when the actor tries to ape Manmohan Singh's walk, it looks more like a humanoid robo cluelessly walking around. And to even think that Anupam Kher actually declared on national television that his performance should be nominated at the Oscars. <laughs> you 
you serious? Perhaps he should think for applying for the Desi version of Saturday Night Live. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, he'll fit in right there. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that the accidental prime minister is factually incorrect or factually correct. It is not for me to decide what's the truth or what's not. But as a film, does the accidental prime minister even attempt to be convincing enough? The accidental prime minister is an exasperating farago of distortions, misrepresentations, and outright lies being displayed by a third-rate delusional actor. masquerading himself as a method actor i'm going with 0.5 out of 5 for the accidental prime minister this is not only bad but irresponsible filmmaking at its worst <laughs>